Lesson 14, the modulus and argument of Z. In this lesson, we're going to define what the modulus and argument are. This diagram here is called the argand diagram, and it was in the, the complex plane. And there's an x-axis here and an i-y-axis here. So first of all, we'll work out what R is. This is x, and this is y. So simply from Pythagoras' theorem, we can see that R will be equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, this is what's called the modulus of z. So the modulus of z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, often called mod z. Now, if you look at this angle here, theta, we can see that the tan of theta is equal to y over x. So now we see that the theta is equal to the inverse tan of y on x. Okay, and therefore we can say that the argument of z is equal to tan to the minus 1 of y on x x, which is the angle. Now, um, the argument is, uh, it's interesting, it has to, you can use the symbol little a, but normally we have big A equals 10 to the minus 1 of y on x, because this is known as the principal argument, and that means that theta will lie between minus pi and pi. Now this leads us into the the, uh, the polar form of, of, the, of a complex number, and we know that uh, z is equal to x plus i y. Now we can put this in a polar form very simply, because we, from here we can see that x over r is equal to cos of theta, which means x equals r cos theta, and y over r equals sine theta. So y equals r sine theta. Putting these together, we can see that z is equal to r cos theta plus r sine theta. And taking r as a common factor, we get z equals r outside of cos theta plus i sine theta. Right, so this is a modulus, and this here is the argument. So once we determine the modulus of the argument, we can then put it in the polar form of a complex number. You can often write this as r cis theta as an abbreviation. Just be a bit careful with it. It is very convenient at times, but um, you so often go back into this form with more complex questions, as we'll see later on. Right, in part one, we have to write z equals 1 plus i root 3 in the modulus argument form. At the moment, it's in the Cartesian form. So first, we'll, we'll work out the, um, the modulus. That's this one, that's the r. So this is 1. And this is going to be root 3. So we can see that r is equal to the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus root 3 squared is 3. So r is equal to 2. The modulus, theta, is equal to the tan, inverse tan of y on x, which is root 3 on 1, or just root 3. And as we know, the inverse tan of root 3 is equal to pi upon 3. So z will be equal to 2. It will be cos pi upon 3 plus i sine pi upon 3. Or if you like, in the abbreviated form, 2 cis pi upon 3.
part two, write z equals one minus i in the modulus argument form. Now I suggest that you draw a little diagram here. Uh, one of my students some years ago kept getting these wrong it's because he was he didn't draw the diagram. It's quite you can see here there's your theta and there's a, there's a one and it's a minus one here. So this is the angle we're after here. Now let's get the modulus going first. So r is equal to square root of one square which is one plus one so that's going to be equal to the square root of two. Now the argument theta equals the inverse tan of minus one on one. Now remember the arguments must lie between principal argument must lie between pi and minus pi. So this is the angle we're after here. So you must write that as minus pi upon four, as we know the the inverse tan of one is pi upon four, so the inverse tan of minus one is minus pi upon four. So this is the domain we're looking at. Right? So now we can write in polar form z equals root two outside the, the cos of minus pi upon four plus i sine of minus pi upon four. Now you may be tempted to change this into the as into cos pi upon four minus i sine pi upon four. Don't you write it in the polar form, and there you should rewrite this as in the simplified form of root two. It'll be the cis of minus pi upon four.